Lamentations. Uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the book of Lamentations. And I have thoroughly enjoyed our studies of the books of the Bible, starting with Genesis. Now we're in the book of Lamentations, and uh, it has helped me. Uh, it has helped me immensely, and uh, I have been on information overload, Bible study overload. I guess maybe not overload, but uh, I've been saturated with the Bible. I've been enjoying every minute of it, and I'm thankful for our Wednesday nights. It's a challenge to me, and hopefully you're challenged in your reading of the Bible. You're challenged in your study of the Bible, and uh, I pray that you're reading the Word of God. You're studying it. You're looking to it. You're delighting in it. You're excited about it. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's so sad how many people are in error. Uh, they're living after the tradition of men or the philosophy of a church, uh, and they are gone uh, studying somebody's opinion rather than the Word of God. When we say the Word of God, we're speaking of the creator of the world. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And we have, in the book of Lamentations, in the Bible, the Word of God. And the book of Lamentations is amazing. It is Jeremiah's uh, poem on the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, you think about that, God's people, uh, God's land, God's city, God's blessing is upon the nation of Israel. Yet they begin to serve other gods. They begin to do their own thing. And because God is a just God, oh, God said, listen, I'm not going to allow my blessing to be upon you. And he sent prophets to that southern kingdom of Judah. He said, if you don't get right God with uh, God, God's going to destroy you. And sure enough, uh, God's judgment came, and it came in the form of Babylon. And we read about that last week in Jeremiah chapter 24, the cup of God's wrath. And sure enough, the wrath of God came down upon the uh, city of Jerusalem, the nation of Judah, and tore down the walls, uh, broke up the temple, uh, ravaged the city. Uh, men, women, and children were killed. Uh, many people were taken into captivity, into the Babylonian captivity. And here's Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet, uh, Jeremiah who'd said, Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Uh, here's what's going to happen. Here's what God says. People ignored him. And he sees the results of people ignoring the prophet. He sees the city in, in, in a total destroyed state. And it's the lamentations or the weeping of Jeremiah. We're going to turn to Lamentations chapter 1. We're just going to read to begin with the first two verses. If you can, stand in honor of God's Word. We'll read these first two verses together. And remember, as we read Jeremiah's poem on the destruction of Jerusalem, let's read these two in unison. Ready? How doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? How is she become as a widow, she that was great among the nations? And princes among the provinces, how is she become tributary? She weepeth sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she hath none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. And what a sad beginning right there. The city, the city of Jerusalem sits solitary. It was full of people, but she's now a widow. She was great, but now she's nothing. And we see that. Jeremiah's looking at this city, and he writes a poem inspired by God on the destruction of Jerusalem. And I'm excited. I, I believe there's so much for us to learn about this great five chapters in the Scriptures. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you, Lord. And uh, it's been a good night. Thank you for allowing our church to be a praying church. And uh, we... Many of us knelt on our knees and we cried out, Lord, we need you. It's so true. We need you. Amen. And Lord, as we hear your word, God, I pray that you help it uh, to really break our hard heartedness into pieces, Lord. Help us to humble ourselves, be willing to even change our lives to please you, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you help us to look at Lamentations, these five chapters, and really learn from them, grow from them, and be encouraged by them, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lamentations. Oh, uh, Jeremiah, the lamenting prophet, or you could say Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. 
And Jeremiah is the weeping re writer of this great book, The Lamentations. He uh, writes these five chapters inspired by God, and it's a reflection uh, it's a reflection poem about the destruction of this great city of Jerusalem. And uh, think about Jerusalem. Think about it with me, Jerusalem, just the name Jerusalem, God's city, the Jewish people, God's people. Uh, think about how God had given his people the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And remember how God began to uh, allow jo Joshua to go into this promised land. And Joshua was excited about the things of God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Remember the mercy of God, the seven cycles of the book of Judges, where God, God's people would serve the Lord. Then they would become complacent. Then they would turn to idol and sin. And then God's judgment would come. And then uh, they would cry out to God, Lord, we need you. And God would send a judge or a deliverer to his people. Uh, got to the book of 1 Samuel and the people began to look at the other nations and began to demand, we want a king. And God had mercy. God was long-suffering. Amen. Praise God for the long-suffering Lord. And Saul became king. And, oh, he was uh, a man that was really uh, head and statue or head and shoulders above everybody else. Uh, but soon his heart began to waver and God's hand of blessing was taken off of him. And uh, next thing we know, uh, God's blessing was put on David. And David was a man who trusted in God. He was a man after God's own heart. David was the one who uh, went into Jerusalem. His men went into Jerusalem, the Jebusite city, Jerusalem, and it became the city of God. And uh, we began to see Jerusalem rise up into the nation of Judah or uh, Israel at that time as a glorious city. Walls begin to be built and we begin to see this city becoming uh, uh, God's place. And eventually Solomon built Solomon's temple in Jerusalem, the mighty city. Uh, they worshiped there. They served there. And we think about that the blessings of the almighty God, God's city, O oh, Jerusalem, uh, it's amazing. God allowed uh, through all of this the, the people of God to serve him, but make their own choices. And many oftentimes they chose not to serve the Lord. Prophets would come and say, get right with God or God will destroy you. The northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed by the Assyrians. The southern kingdom uh, had prophets like Isaiah. And then last week, Jeremiah. Ah, it's over. God's judgment is coming. God's wrath is coming. There's going to come someone from the north. The Babylonians are going to come. They are going to destroy you. And well, uh, Jeremiah was thrown into a miry uh, pit that had clay in there. He was despised. He was put on a uh, bread and water feast. And people laughed him to scorn. And next thing you know, it happened. Imagine the Babylonians come. And they try to put up their last front of, of fight. They have uh, uh, little uh, battering rams that battering ram the, the city gates right there. They have uh, a attack of archers and fire. And next thing you know, imagine the Babylonians getting into the city. They're killing men, women, and children. Uh, they're taking everything. They take the gold and the silver of the temple and they begin to take it away. Uh, the men are murdered and they begin to look for some men to take with them. And the whole city is uh, set on fire. The temple, the great temple is broken down. The walls are broken down. And the next thing you know, uh, the people who once were plenteous don't have any food. Uh, it gets so bad in the book of Lamentations, you will see that some of the ladies were eating their own children. It was so bad that they got to the point they were so hungry they were eating their own children. Here comes Jeremiah. Jeremiah begins to uh, see this terrible tragedy. He's watching this terrible tragedy. And boy, uh, Jeremiah uh, has the weeping prophet. It's, it's bringing him to tears thinking about God's people at such a low state. God's people in the hand of judgment of God. God's people who were not meant to be like this, to be basically uh, not blessed but cursed by the Almighty God. We can read a lot about that in 2 Kings chapter 24 and 25. But here we go. Think about lamentations. Lamentations are found throughout the scriptures. Uh, times where God's people or God's man were weeping over things. Psalms chapter 63 verse 1. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. A Psalm of David. But David lamented, was crying out. Psalm 69, save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. 
It's a lamentation. Psalm 74, verse 1, O oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Why doth thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? It's lamenting. It's, it's weeping over some, uh, some of, uh, something going on in their life. Psalm 79, verse number 1, O oh God, the heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled. They have laid Jerusalem on heaps. It's a lamentation. It's interesting because Jeremiah, the author of the book of Lamentations, inspired by God, uh, wrote another lamentation in the scriptures. It's interesting. Where did he write another lamentation? Think about it with me for a moment. What other lamentation did he write? In 2 Chronicles chapter uh, 35, verse 25, and Jeremiah lamented for... Does anybody know? Just guess. Josiah. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah, and all the singing men and singing women spake of Josiah in their lamentation to this day. And you read about how Josiah, this great godly king, went to war against the Egyptians and died. And where uh, jo Le Jeremiah lamented for this great king right there. Lamentations, listen to me real quick. To understand this, lamentations uh, show clear human emotion and suffering. It's normal for us to have emotions. Uh, we can't get rid of our emotions. Even the most non-emotional person has emotions. And you think about it, lamentations shows clear human emotions and suffering. We all have struggles and difficulties. These lamentations found in the scriptures show clearly that people, good people, God's people, have struggles and difficulties. Amen. Amen. I want to say that again, because even good people, God's people, uh, you and I have struggles with our emotions. Oh, you're hoping for a map this evening. I'm not going to draw you a map this evening. I, I know it's uh, crushing you. And so um, Lamentations has an interesting design layout. And so uh, the book of Lamentations, if you're there, has a, an amazing uh, design layout. It's five chapters, five chapters. And uh, the first chapter, I'll do this, one, uh, two, three, four. I was hoping you'd help me count because I don't know what comes after four. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. The Nettisheim kids know, and praise God for that. Uh, but this uh, lamentation, an interesting uh, layout, uh, four of the five, uh, I'm going to put this, one, two, three, four, uh, have a unique layout. It's called an acrostic or alphabet psalm. And so in the uh, English language, there are 26 letters in the English le language, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, we know that, all the way to Z. Uh, in uh, the Hebrew language, there's only 22 letters. They don't have consonants. There's 22 letters. And so each one of these uh, starts with the first. There's 22 verses here. 22 verses here, there's 66 verses, 22 verses, then 22 verses. And you begin to look at this, uh, chapter 1's an acrostic, 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 acrostic. This has 22 verses, but it is not an acrostic or an alphabet uh, type of psalm. And uh, it's interesting to think that uh, these five chapters are well organized, well organized. There is a solid structure. There's solid structure in the Lamentations. And it's like God is showing us that we can have order in the midst of chaos. Uh, think about this. It's, uh, there's chaos going on, difficulty, struggle. It's like God is saying we can have order in the midst of chaos. We can have structure in the midst of pain and confusion. By the way, the whole point is we're going to go through times in our life when we have chaos, we have difficulties, we have str struggles, but God's going to show us that we can have hope, hope, hope in the midst of difficulties and struggles. We can have structure when things are in chaos. And so we get to the first chapter. I want you to uh, turn there to chapter number one, if you will. And uh, we're going to go through this pretty uh, quickly. Chapter one has how many verses? Man, you're a genius right there. Chapter 2 has how many verses? 22. Chapter 3 has how many? 66. Brilliant. Chapter 4 has how many? 22. Chapter 5 has how many? 22. Good. Now, Lamentations chapter 1, uh, if you look at this, it's, um, well, go to verse number 1. Look at verse number 1. And how, how doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? How is... 
she. Do you see that? She. Okay, so it describes Jerusalem as being a lady, a she. Uh, and it says she become as a widow. And as you begin to read this, you'll notice in verse number two, she weepeth sore in the night. A little bit later, her lovers, she hath uh, uh, none to comfort her. Verse number three, she dwelleth among the heathen, she findeth no rest. In verse number six, and from the daughter of Zion, all her beauty is departed. And you'll notice it, uh, it's used the, the word she, and it describes a widow lady. And I don't know if I could draw, let me draw a sad, oh, I should have practiced this. Okay. Some of you are crying at my picture right there. I thought it was halfway decent, and so it turned out better than I imagined right there. Amen. And the point being, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the weeping widow. Not it, widow, not willow. Do you understand? Jerusalem is the weeping widow. And make sure you understand that she is. Look a little bit further, verse number 7. Jerusalem. Remember in the days of her affliction and of her miseries, all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old when her people fell into the hand of the enemy and none did help her. The adversary saw her and did mock at her Sabbaths. Verse 8, Jerusalem hath grievously sinned. Verse number 17, go a little bit further. It says, Zion spreadeth forth her hands and there is none to comfort her. This is the widow that is weeping. In verse number 18, the Lord is righteous, for I have rebelled against his commandment. Verse 19, I called for my lovers, but they deceived me. Verse number 20, behold, O Lord, for I am in distress. My bowels are troubled. Mine heart is turned within me, for I have grievously rebelled. And right there in that first, you find the weeping widow. And it's the Jerusalem is weeping and the whole city is weeping. There's tears. There's not blaming God for it, but blaming self. We turned from you. We rebelled against you, God. It's not your fault, God. It's my fault. Lord, you've brought us low, but we earned that. We're weeping. We're sorrow. And, and there's so much to learn from that. Uh, the, the city right there had rebelled against God. And it brought tears to the weeping widow, the city. Chapter 2, yeah, this is interesting. And uh, if you go to chapter 2, before, before I get too far, far into this, uh, I, I, you're there in chapter 2. This, this chapter 2, it speaks of the Lord, He, the Lord. I'm going to put He, He, and the Lord, okay? Lord. Okay, I'm not going to draw a picture of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Just to let you know. And so God, God is long suffering. He's slow to anger, but he, God, will judge the sin of people. Think about that statement right there. God is long suffering. Praise God for the long suffering of the Lord. And you think about that word long suffering found four times in the Old Testament. All four of those times speak of our great God. Just the word for long-suffering four times uh, in the Old Testament. It's found in Exodus 34, 6. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering. Numbers 14, 18. The Lord is long-suffering. Uh, Psalm 86, verse 15. But thou, O Lord, art full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering. In Jeremiah 15, 15. O Lord, then it says, take me not away in thy long-suffering. And so it's an interesting thought as we get into this chapter. God is long-suffering. He's slow to anger, but he will judge the sin of people. That's right. In other words, in this chapter, we're going to see the Lord's anger. Okay, you're going to see the word anger. Now just say that with me. Anger. anger. Now this, this side looks more angry than this side. And so this side like your anger. Okay, I'm pretty good at that right there. Try it one time. Anger. Uh, that, now, I don't know, Jeremiah, was that pretty, that was pretty scary anger right there, okay? Now try it over here just one time. Anger! 
The Nettis times are well too good at that right there. Anger. And uh, in this chapter, we see God's anger. God's anger. Now, listen to this. God's anger is not volatile. Um, it's not a volatile anger. God's anger is just yes, and it's right. right. This is important. God just doesn't fly off the handle. God just doesn't uh, get over it, done, anger. But, but God's anger is just and God's anger is right. God is long-suffering, slow to anger, but he will judge the sin of the people. That's called justice, justice. He will judge, properly judge, the sin of the people. So go to chapter 2 there and look with me at this wonderful chapter. It's about the Lord, and it says, How, long, how hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his, what? Anger. Anger. And cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel, and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. anger. The Lord hath swallowed up all the inhabitants of Jacob. Verse number three, look at this. He hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He hath bent his, uh, verse four, he hath bent his bow like an enemy. Verse five, the Lord was as an enemy. He hath swallowed up Israel. Verse eight, the Lord hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He hath stretched out a line. He hath not withdrawn his hands from destroying. Therefore, he made a, the rampart and the wall to lament. They languished together. Look at verse 22. I'm trying to go through this, but it's speaking of the Lord. He in his long suffering, he slowed anger, but there comes a point when he's got to be do his justice. And oh, it, the just and proper thing was his anger right here. And his anger was just, it was proper. Verse number 22, thou hast called as in a solemn day my terrors round about. So then in the day of the Lord's anger, none escaped nor remained. Those that I have swallowed, uh, swaddled and brought up hath mine enemy consumed. The Lord's divine judgment on Jerusalem. The Lord is long-suffering, he's slow to anger, but he will judge the sin of the people. Now, we go to chapter 3. Turn to chapter 3. This is the long chapter. Uh, we go 22 verses, 22 verses. This is an acrostic or an alphabet uh, poem. This is an alphabet poem. This is also an alphabet or an acrostic type of, of poem. And in chapter 3, as the longest chapter, we see a man that hath seen affliction. And you'll notice this, uh, uh, a man that hath seen affliction. This chapter has elements. Uh, it's, it's wild. It has some of the elements of Job in it. Uh, has some of the Psalms in it, and Isaiah, it, it's, uh, it, it has places in the Bible, has sort of uh, little pickets or little pockets of the book of Psalms, little pocket of the book of Job. It has a little pocket of the book of Isaiah. For example, the book of Job, chapter 3, uh, verses 2 and 4. Listen, listen to this. Job, Job is, you remember, uh, lost his family, lost his wealth, lost his health, and he says, and Job spake and said, let the day perish wherein I was born. And the night in which it was said, there is a man child re, uh, conceived. Let, the, let uh, that day be, be darkness. Let not God regard it from above. In other words, Job is crying out, this is bad. And so there'll be an element of Job in here. This man of affliction in chapter three is crying out and saying, things are bad. Do you understand that? You, you'll see like Psalms chapter 22 which is a Psalm of David. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And you'll see an element of that Psalm 22 where that man is in, in affliction. The man in affliction is going to say, basically, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's a, another word in like uh, Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, it speaks of Jesus being a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And so this man here in Isaiah cha or in Lamentations chapter 3 is going to be lamenting. He's going to be a man in affliction. He's going to be like a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. So it's a man in an affliction. A man, a man, just think affliction. Affliction. Some of you are afflicted this evening during the sermon. I see it in your eyes here tonight. And so it's not that long, amen? You're long-suffering, but you don't have to be that long-suffering, amen? Now look at chapter 3, verse number 1. Are you ready for this? I am the man that hath seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. And as you, you look at this, he hath led me 
and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me is he turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. He hath broken my bones. He hath builded against me and compassed me uh, with gall and travail. He hath set me in dark places and they that be uh, dead of old. It's a man in affliction. Do you understand that? The first chapter, remember, is the widow woman. Jerusalem as the widow woman. Uh, chapter two is the Lord. The Lord, his anger. Anger, I should put that. The anger of the Lord is righteous judgment. He is long-suffering, uh, but there is anger there. This one is a man in affliction under the judgments of God. There's elements of the book of Job. There's elements of the book of Isaiah. There's elements of the book of Isaiah in that book right there. It, it's an amazing, amazing uh, chapter to read. And we're going to come back to in a little bit of a moment. But go to Lamentations chapter 4. This chapter 4 is the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay, chapter 4. And so, ah, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem. And uh, yeah, I wish I could draw a good picture of Jerusalem. We could uh, try here, and I'll draw the gates right here of Jerusalem. And I'll draw a wall here. Dun, 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 dun. You say, that doesn't look too good, Pastor. Well, it's the broken down Jerusalem. Amen. And so here's a little uh, trail going out right there. We'll have a little thing right here. I'll even draw a person up there. And he'll have a bow and arrow. Ha! And so he is being attacked by the Babylonians right here. They have their battering ram. And here he is right here, carrying it all by himself. They're strong. And they're mighty right there. And so, uh, praise the Lord. So, think chapter 4. It's once again an acrostic, an alphabet, 22 verses right there. But it's about the destruction of Jerusalem. It has gotten really bad, okay? Uh, he's lamenting, but it's going to describe the destruction. How bad has it been? The city is torn apart. It's going to describe the destruction. Uh, gold become dim, stone in the sanctuary poured out. Look at this real quick. Look at chapter 4, verse 1. How is the gold become dim? Used to be a rich city, not so much anymore. Uh, how is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. They took the sanctuary and they took all the stones and threw them out in the street. They destroyed the whole thing. Go, go down to verse number 4. The tongue of the sucking child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst. The young child, children ask bread, and no man breaketh it unto them. Imagine a young child so thirsty that his tongue cleaveth to his mouth. We would feel bad, would we not? Uh, they're begging for bread, and nobody's giving it to them. I mean, it's not, not even that they're, they're, there's no bread. It's not even like there's people that are being mean to these children. There's just no bread to even give to these children. And Jeremiah's watching that. It's like a helpless situation. Jerusalem, this mighty city that went from having lots of food, God's blessing, gold, Solomon's temple there, splendor, grandeur, O Jerusalem, that wonderful city, the capital of all Israel right there has gone to completely destroyed, ransacked. That's why he's weeping. Look at this. Look, you got to see this. Verse number five. They that did feed delicately are desolate in the streets. That was the rich people. Now, they're desolate in the streets. They that were brought up in, in scarlet embrace dunghills. Uh, they, they, they had delicacies like the scarlet. They were fancy dressed and they had money. Now they're around the dunghills. It's gotten really bad. Go to verse number 10. You, this, is, this is a must see, have to see, otherwise you do not pass the test. Uh, verse number 10. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. Sodden. They boiled their children. Sodom. Ate them. And just imagine, just going there, and Jeremiah is looking at the city. The walls are broken down. The hungry children. It break, it's like... He wants to do something, but he can't do anything. This is God's long suffering, but judgment has come. He's watching a mom eating her children. It's just bad, bad, bad. This whole thing is about the destruction of Jerusalem.
By the way, can I just say that's where sin leads you? That's where sin leads you. And that's just a by the way. Boy, we people, uh, especially Christians, we ought to realize how good we got it. Boy, the hand of the Lord's blessings, good. But we go away from the Lord, we lead down to this path of a destroyed life, destroyed life, destroyed life. Many people live destroyed lives when they get away from God, and it's bad. It is bad. It is bad. Chapter 5 is really interesting. This is the last chapter, and uh, I'm going to try to draw something and see if you can figure out what it is, okay? Hmm. Thank, good, 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 good. Well, that's not the hand of God. Praying, good. Whew. That's good, thank you. It wasn't that good, but it was good that you guessed. I'm pretty impressed. And so uh, this chapter right here, chapter five, is a prayer. It's a prayer, a prayer of the people of Jerusalem for God's mercy. I'm going to put prayer right here, prayer, just to remind you what that is. Uh, it's a prayer of the people of Jerusalem for God's mercy. It's a prayer uh, for the people of Jerusalem for God's mercy. By the way, Jerusalem goes from order. There's order. Uh, there's order. Or, or the book of Lamentation, there's order. And uh, Jeremiah goes to from order, the alphabet acrostic poem, to all of a sudden, the last one, he goes away from that acrostic, away from that alphabet. It's like... Uh, it's like after he gets done with describing this destruction of Jerusalem that he goes from order to disorder. It's like an explosion, you might say, of confusion over the destruction of Israel. It's interesting. We'll go to heaven and ask God why he did that. But it goes from complete order to just it's like uh, something changes right there. There is 22 verses there, but it's totally different than the first four. It's like uh, uh, can't take anymore. We're done. The only hope we have is to go to the almighty God. And as you read this right here, uh, it is an interesting, well, it's an interesting, it's sort of like, it's sort of like, uh, well, look at it. I'm getting ahead of myself. Look at verse number one. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for, for money. Our wood is sold unto us. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. We have given the land to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers have sinned and are not. But it's just a prayer. You read this whole thing. It's a prayer to the Almighty God. They're prying out. Uh, the orphans, the fatherless, the mothers, the widows. Uh, it says in verse 15, the joy of our heart is ceased. Verse 17, for this our heart is faint. For these things our eyes are dim. Now, as you look at this, it's a, I'm not saying a weird ending, but a different ending. And this is the very, the very last chapter, the very last few verses, verse 15 or 19. Thou, O Lord, remainest forever, thy throne from generation to generation. Wherefore dost thou forget us forever and forsake us so long time? Turn thou us, uh, turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned, renew our days as of old, but thou hast utterly rejected us and art very wroth against us. It's, it's, it's weird. Like imagine the song, Amazing Grace. Amazing, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. What, just don't sing it for a second. See, all messed me up. <laughs> Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like Stop it. It's natural that we have the ending, saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now. Stop it. Stop it. But it's natural to finish. And God left us some tension involved here because it's like an unfinished state right there. But thou has utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth against us. It's a, an ending that's a difficult ending. There's no happiness. There's no joy. God, you've rejected us. You've utterly forgot about us. And it's a, a different type of ending. There's hurt. There is pain. They will go to the Lord with their struggles. And, and, we de, and they're saying, we deserve what we get. You're on the throne forever and ever, Lord. But you've utterly rejected us. And it shows. 
And, and it's an interesting ending because it doesn't bring that conclusion where the blessings of God are back. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So it's a, it's a, but it's, I think it's put that way to remind all of us that's where sin goes. Yeah. Sin leads. Yeah. we got to be wary of sin. Now, we're going to conclude, but we're going we're to conclude with going back to chapter 3 for just a moment. Because in the midst of all of this, remember this, in the midst of the widow woman, the Lord's anger, a man in affliction, uh, Jerusalem being destroyed, a prayer, a prayer right there, in the very midst of lamentations is hope. A wonderful, wonderful glimpse of hope. Yes, in verse number 21, remember in chapter 3, there's the man that's in affliction, has some, uh, some presence of Job, a little bit of, of uh, Psalms in there in the book of Isaiah. But in chapter tw 3, verse 21, this I recall in my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And you could continue on that because the rest of the chapter is a lot like that. But in the midst of all of that, the, the man right there who is in an affliction right there still finds hope and finds mercy in the almighty God. In the middle of the storm of difficulty, we can find hope in the mercy of God. Great is his faithfulness. Hey, remember this when you're treated wrongfully, when you're treated badly by somebody. Hey, remember, it's of the mercies of the Lord. You're not consumed. His compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Remember this when you're being chastened by God for your sin. You deserve it. Lord, I deserve this, but I thank you for your mercy, God. I thank you for your grace, God. Remember this when you're in the midst of the impossible. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Remember this when your strength is gone and your courage is no more. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And I love that verse right there. It's a, a, one of the most powerful verses really in all the scriptures. You have a bad day. You ever had a bad day? Yeah. How many of you have ever had a bad day? Yeah. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking. Let me see. And He's, anybody over here, these people over back there have it, okay? Uh, boy, you have a bad day. You know what? It's good go, going to sleep. It's good getting up in the morning and having God's mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Lord's mercies that we're not, because you've got to memorize that. Think about that. And that's where we began today in this psalm, or this uh, point right there was in page 26 in your songbook. Look at it. We're going to. Uh, close with this, but the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, comes from Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Chapter 23, uh, verse 22 and 23, verse, or chapter, chapter, song 26. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. In the midst of all of that, the widow woman, uh, the anger of God, the affliction, the destruction of Jerusalem, we can pray and we can find hope because of God's mercy. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. It's been a good night. The book of Lamentations, thank you for it. Thank you for the wisdom found in it. Help us to love this book. 
to delight in this book. Help us to believe this book, Lord. And God, I pray that you watch over the families. Maybe, Lord, help somebody right now who's going through a difficulty. Uh, maybe it's the widow woman. Maybe it's uh, somebody dealing with God's anger. Maybe it's somebody in affliction or a destroyed life. Help them to go to you in prayer, remembering that your mercy is new every morning, Lord. And God, you are faithful, loving, caring God, and in you we can find hope. Lord, thank you for this church. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand with me if you will. Turn around and shake.